We got a helper up there tonight. And uh, so if we look up vagabond, it means many different things. But it's a person that wanders from place to place. They haven't settled in. They wander around in circles, not having a feeling of belonging and seeming to be in a lost mind a lot of times. There's also several other things that it means, but a fugitive is a person who runs. Uh, we know there's fugitives out there right now running from the law. And then the Lord was dealing with me about those fugitives out there right now that's spiritually running. And then he went to dealing with me about the lost sheep. Those that are running or lost sheep. I said here once in the church that <clears throat> I like to go out after the ones that nobody else can win. Because I find out when they get one and they really get in love with Jesus, they become some of the most powerful soul winners and preachers that there is. The word vagabond is used in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The word fugitive is also in the Old Testament. And, you know, I get to look at this and I say, Lord, well, what are you talking about? And what are you trying to tell me? And the Lord went dealing with me that, that I've been surrounded by people running. I've been surrounded by fugitives and surrounded by people that are lost without a purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> you're going to have to keep a grip on her, sister. I'll go a long ways with it, but it's easy enough to do. Just hold her. Um, getting back into lost sheep. They're everywhere. Fugitives. Everywhere. Vagabonds. Everywhere. Which leads me to the book of Genesis. You'll go over there with me now to the fourth chapter. Is there anybody, anybody who does not have a Bible with them tonight? Raise your hand. In this passage here, we talk about two brothers. And those brothers are Cain and Abel. And we know that one of them was a good boy, according to what the gospel said. One of them was a tiller of the ground, and one of them was a keeper of the sheep. And the way it is, is God winds up looking at this, this church, this Actually, two kinds of people in the church, Sister Barbara. They those that work for the Lord, that keep the sheep, and then there's the lost that's running. Keep it in mind, everybody's welcome here at the church. Uh, and keep it in mind that we don't want to run nobody off. But if that baby was to tip over one of these instruments on her and hurt her, then the finger would definitely be pointed at me. Um, we love people and enjoy people coming here, but there's a time for everything. And I feel like it's time for her to just be obedient to what the Lord would want. I don't believe the Lord's pleased with that baby running all over the church constantly. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to get into this passage. I'm not trying to offend nobody. 
but I don't want no blood on my hands. And I don't want nobody looking down on God for being God. Uh, he, we're going to either obey the Lord or we ain't. And everybody in here, we got our own, soul, own souls and own salvation to work out with. But God wants the people to be happy. Come together in unity. Let's read what this says here. And I'm going to start first verse. It says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the first wings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. I want to stop there just for a second. And we got two brothers. And they both came out of the same womb. And they were both coming forth to bring an offering. One offered the fruit of the ground. But one offered one of his prizes. One of his firstborn sheep. And I looked at that and I said, Lord, that's kind of like us. And it is, Brother Paul, because sometimes some, some of us will give our best to serve the Lord and to give the Lord what belongs to Him. But then, Brother Wally, some of us will just try to get by and pass it by God with giving Him a little bit of our time or a little bit of what He wants. But they won't give Him all of what they got. Then it goes on and it says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? If any of you don't know what wroth means, that means kind of like being mad or upset. But I'm going to go a step further in there, and I'm going to say that Cain was jealous. Any of the, any of the Bible scholars in here believe, believe that Cain was jealous? Because I'm getting in here, no Cain saying, "Man, I worked hard and I tilled the ground and I I grow this beautiful fruit, and here I am coming to offer it to the Lord." And and he's saying, "Hey, he's not very pleased with what I'm offering." And then I begin to look at Oh Abel here. He's out there, and he's just a person that works with sheep. Do you know how hard it is to work with sheep? <laughs> they some of the most aggravating animals they are. You'll try to stir one to go this way and he'll go the other way for sure. <laughs> kind of like we are. Mm -hmm. We know to go the right way. That sheep knows where to go. He knows where to be. You can go out and you can holler at a cow. Here, here, cow, here. And that old cow will come up there to that big place. Oh, yeah. But sheep ain't that way. We think that we are special. And I look at sheep. You know what? They're hard-headed. <laughs> I'm going to get to where I'm going in a minute. But old Cain was mad. How many Christians get mad when we don't get what we want? Let me read on. And the Lord said to Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? In other words, he had a sad look. I just don't care. You gonna take and you're gonna say Cain's offering was better than mine? Hmm. Ain't neither. But there was something about Abel's offering that was different from Cain's offering. And I'm gonna touch on that just for a minute, but then I'm gonna say also there was something different about Abel than there was Cain. Keep it in mind, they both came out of the same womb. Mm -hmm. Keep it in mind that the woman who bare those two boys was the woman that was under the curse. Come on now. 
that curse had already went forward before she ever bare those two children. And then I go to look and I said, Lord, why was he so angry and upset? And the Lord said, well, for one, he was the firstborn. It said that. He was the oldest. And then I get to looking at that and I go thinking, James, that still don't mean, why did he get upset? Why? He got angry. It brought an old frown upon him. In other words, church, he acted like a sidepuss. Uh -oh. Come on. Yeah. He did. Kind of like some of the sheep uh -oh. when they don't get what they want. And when they think they're doing so much, when they ain't hardly doing nothing. Come on, anybody agree with me or you say you're wrong? It's true anyhow. I don't get a whole lot of amens off of that. But I'm going to go forward here in a minute. Just follow me for a minute. And it said, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? <laughs> That's God speaking. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. In other words, church, God knows your heart. God knows where you came from. God knows where you're going to. And God knows what your intents are. But it was kind of like a religious thing. And there's a whole lot of people in the church today. They got a religious thing. But my God don't look at us as being so much of a religious people. And you say, crazy? You crazy preacher. And I, yeah, just follow me for a minute. And under thee shall, thou, shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. I said, Lord, did he really get that mad? Over the offering? Over not being accepted? Or was it that he got that mad because he couldn't get his way? There's a lot of things pertaining to this. We look at Cain and Abel as something that, you know, a lot of people treat, they teach and preach about it, but I'm looking at two brothers that basically had a war going on on one side, and then one of them was just a happy-go-lucky old boy that done all he could do to please the Lord. Kind of same way they are in the church today. We got two kinds of people really in the church today. We got those that love people, that go out of their way to serve the Lord and do whatever they can do. Then, Steve, we got this thing called jealousy, envy, pride, and strife, and rebelliousness in the church. And if you don't do something that I like, then I'm going to get puffed. I'm going to get sold up. I might even tell somebody that I'm going to leave the church or I might even tell somebody I'm not going back there because that old preacher is too tough. But you know what? That's okay because I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. That's why this church is growing. And I say, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? You need to tell people to quit running. You need to tell people to quit being rebellious. You need to tell people to quit being prideful. Mm -hmm. You need to tell people to quit being jealous. Mm -hmm. I said jealous twice, didn't I? Because yeah. jealousy is a powerful thing in the church today. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's sitting over there in my seat. That's my seat. I've been sitting there since I've been going to that church. There ain't no names on none of these seats. And then I look at that. Then I say, oh, oh, he got my place up there. That's my place to stand and sing. There ain't no place on this stage got a name on it. 
And then I look at the church and I say the church is all messed up because the church is working off of feelings and emotions instead of spiritualness. Touch your neighbor and say it's got to be spiritualness. That's what happened to Cain and Abel. We got one of them that's working on spirituality. Then we've got another one that's working on the flesh. But if you're Cain and you till the ground and you might be a hard worker, but that don't mean that you're going to get the blessing that Abel got. See, because God didn't have no respect for Cain and he had respect for Abel. The reason he had respect respect for Abel is because Abel give everything he had to God and Cain didn't want to give it up. Touch your brother and tell him you gotta give it up. You can't stand on it and keep it and think God is gonna be pleased. You've got to give everything up to follow God. You've got to give everything up to serve God. You can't be a vagabond. You can't be one of those fugitives on the run. You've got to stop and stand still and say God whatever it takes I'll do what you want me to do. You may lose some friends along the way, but there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And it's time for the church to get under the power of God and the anointing of God and put away the flesh and the things of the flesh and say, yes, Lord, here I am. Call out my name and I will follow you. But we got a lot of people wanting to follow everything in the world except God. I used to have a set of eyes, but according to my Bible, and it's in there, if I looked at it and thought about it with an impurity in my mind, then I just as well have went and done it because I was guilty of it. God's looking at the church and he says, hey, how many of those in the church? You might be not saying it, but you sure could be thinking it. And I want to have a pure thought when it comes to God. And I want God to have a pure thought about me. God said he respected Abel and he loved Abel because Abel gave the best that he had. Oh, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about service to the Lord. I'm talking about giving God all your passion. I'm talking about giving God all your life. It's more than come to church with a smile on your face. It's more than come to church just lifting your hands. It's more than coming to church and singing a song because if your heart ain't in it, then you ain't going to win it. Amen. Touch your neighbor and tell him your heart's got to be in this thing. Your heart's got to be in this thing. Tell your neighbor God's tired of this wishy-washy. God's tired of this wishy-washy. Abel, the keeper of the sheep. And I thought about that. You know, when you keep a sheep, you got a job to do. Because them old sheep, they crazy. Come on, they get stuck in rocks. That's why, that's, that, listen to me. Uh, that's, why, that's why Moses had that big old long staff with a hook on it. To get for them things got stuck at because they could get into some situations and get in some places and get stuck because a sheep does not know how to be led. What, what are you saying? Sheep don't know how to be led. Search it out. It's there. But they do know how to follow. I got my grandpa's picture of this. My grandpa had these old crazy brush goats. They would eat anything, anywhere, anytime. They, if you left a hat out in that field, you wouldn't have that hat when you went mm -hmm. back to that field. And that old hat would be chewed up and you'd get mad at that crazy old goat. He had this one old goat, he'd get about 50 foot from him and that's as close as he could get to him. And for three years, nobody could touch that goat. And I told my grandpa, I said, you know how to catch that goat? He said, I've been trying to catch that goat son for two years and can't get close enough to him to catch him. He said, you can't rope him because he won't get close enough. I said, Grandpa, you want me to tell you how to catch that goat? He said, tell me how to catch that goat. I said, you got to feed that goat. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Same way with sheep that want to run and don't want to come in. You got to feed them. Look at what the Lord told Peter. He said, Peter, thou lovest me? 
He said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Lord, thou lovest me. You, oh, Lord, you know I do. Feed my lambs. <laughs> you would think that sheep and lambs would be the same thing, and they're not. But they're both got one thing in common. they stubborn. They don't want to do it the way they ought to do it. They all got minds of their own. Touch your neighbor and tell them it ain't a good thing to have a mind of your own. <laughs> now, somebody going to rebel at that. <laughs> But you're supposed to put on the mind of... <coughs> and you say, where are you going with this, Pastor? Oh, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> Let's read on just a minute. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Huh? He was still puffed. He was still angry. And Christians are that way. Do you know Christians are some of the most hard-headedest people they are? Because they won't forget and they won't forgive. Come on. I'm telling the truth tonight. You get a Christian upset at you and they'll remember something that happened three years ago when it was supposed to already been put under the blood. And the more they've been remembered and the longer they think about it, the matter they get. And it sets are just fester. You know what we got in the church? A bunch of festered up Christians. A bunch of people that can't get loose. A bunch of people that can't get free. Because they won't do it God's way, they try to do it their way. And it's already got them in enough mess that they don't know what's going to happen next. But look at what he said. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. What do you mean? Ain't we supposed to love one another? Yeah. What do you mean? Ain't we supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves? Ain't we supposed to help, give? Ain't we supposed to reach out? But see, it was all in Cain's mind. He done cross. His brother done crossed him. His brother didn't do nothing to him. And you know that's the exact same thing in the way it is in the church, Sister Eddie. We got people in the church that say they love one another, but down inside they're bitter about stuff. And that bitter keeps them from going forward. People will get mad in the church, Brother Wally, and they'll say, oh, I'm not mad. But the countenance on their face and their voice shows it all. Ain't it strange, this message? About pride, jealousy, bitterness, anger, and how people hold on to it instead of getting rid of it. And I looked at Cain and Abel, Brother Wally, and I said two brothers that came from the same place, one seemed to be good, one seemed to be bad. And the Lord said the curse that was put upon them in the garden is what caused it. Huh? Oh, now, I got a cross look from the elder. Oh, Steve, you said something powerful. Give me a five on that. Don't butt me hard now. Good seed. Bad seed. I told my wife one time, I said, we got some good seeds. And we got some bad seeds. She said, oh, I don't believe that. Let's look at a tree and fruit. All produce fruit. But when some of it comes forth, it ain't no good. Something caused that. You might be saying, preacher, you're preaching crazy tonight. No, I'm preaching about what is growing in the church. The fugitives that want to keep running and don't want to give it to God. The generational curses that never get broken and people get set free. Touch your neighbor and tell them you've got to be set free. you got to be set free. And you can't be set free if you're still under the curse. And this is very clear. 
I know you say, well, where are you going with this? You're going to find out in just a minute. I'm not finished. But these two brothers warred. Do you know, there's nothing wrong with competition. It's in the church everywhere. Huh? Oh, but I'm going to touch on something else that's in the church. And it's called partiality. But you know what, Brother Wally? There ain't no partiality in this church. You know what's in this church? A standard. A standard that God rolled out. That God laid out. I don't look at one sheep any different than I look at the other sheep. And God's going to judge me one of these days just like He's going to judge everybody in this house. And He's going to say, do you look at this one any different than you did that one? And then when he especially gets to family, and that's hard on a pastor if he's got family in church. Because then he's got to do exactly what God would have him do. And I said, Lord, I come from a family, a big family. A lot of my people ain't serving the Lord. And I'd be safe to say a lot of them ain't saved. But that ain't because they didn't get exposed to it. It ain't because they didn't have it around. And then I look at Cain and Abel coming from the same place. And it's almost like Cain wanted to be brutal. Come on. Come on. Cain wanted to be brutal. He wanted to get his brother off in the field so he could tell him off. How many of you in here ever got upset at somebody and said, I'd love to get a chance to get that person off? <laughs> And just tell them off. Come on, be honest. You're here. You might as well raise your hand. Oh, now does God work in that? Yes, he does. Because here's what happens. The Christian person that wanted to tell somebody off, they may have said, oh, I'm going to tell them off. When I get a chance, I'm going to tell them off. And then when you got a chance, they just walked on by. <laughs> Come on, that's real too. If you've been in that position, raise your hand. Mine's too short, raised. <laughs> Cain and Abel were two brothers that God produced out of the same womb. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Oh, we're going to get to that. You just. They were what? Two different people. Oh, my goodness. Is it. You So you're telling me that two different people can come out of the same womb? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute now. Do they disguise themselves? Come on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It even says in the Word of God, they'll come to deceive many disguised as a messenger of. But you will know them by the. And a frown and jealousy and strife. That ain't too good a fruit. So we got two fruits, one good fruit, one bad fruit. We got one of them that wants to please the Lord that just tends to the sheep. We got one of them that thinks, oh, I'm better, I gave more, I've done more, so I should be owed this much. And then he got his brother off into a field and killed him. I'm getting where I'm going. I thank you for being patient with me. Then we got people in the church, oh, listen, I, I forgave them, I forget it. I done done away with it. It's under the blood. How many of you heard that expression for years? It's under the blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, but listen, if it was under the blood, then they still wouldn't be talking about it. And then by them talking about it, all they going around doing is digging up stuff. This stuff been covered. By the blood. And then when you uncover it, what happens to it, Sister Barbara? You a scholar. Tell me what happens to that thing that's done been covered by the blood whenever they uncover it. Ooh. Powerful question, wasn't it? Brings that curse back to life. What? Brings that curse back to life. Brings that curse back on It smells. <laughs> but if I'm not mistaken, 
It's kind of like the demons. When you run that demon off and you let him come back, then he brings seven more worse than he was. I was talking to somebody earlier about some curses being broken. He told somebody that all they need to do was pray that spirit off the cell. And I want you to know right now, as bad as it sounds, I believe that Cain had a spirit on him. I believe that spirit came from the curse that was put upon him. And I believe that that curse was in that family. Huh? But look what God said. Sin lies at the door. Where's the door? Your heart. Sin was in his heart. Sin was in his mind. In other words, he had an evil way of thinking. He might be smiling on the outside, but he had an evil way of thinking. We got people in the church that smile on the outside, but they got an evil way of thinking. We got people in the church that say, I'm so good, but behind doors, they so bad. They can hide it from the preacher. He even thought he could hide it from the Lord because he asked the Lord, where is your brother? I don't know where my brother's at. Am I my brother's keeper? Deception. Deception is another thing in the church today. But look what happened. He didn't have to say a word. Because the Lord heard a cry. And it was the ground that was crying out. Because there was blood being shed. And what are you saying, Brother Glenn? There's blood being shed in the church. There's people not looking at the things that they're doing. And thinking that there's a consequence to it. The same way that Cain and Abel looked at things was the same way that the world is looking at things right now. We got one that wanted to serve God and give God all that he had. Then we've got another that wants to try to sway its way to that vagabond that God spoke into my ears about. That fugitive that God spoke into my ears about. And I said, Lord, there was a cry. The ground was crying out because the blood that had been shed. There's a whole lot of blood that's being shed in the church today and I tell you here right now the man said I can't get away from what I feel let me tell you God has a way with dealing with people that they know their wrong was wrong and they know the thing that they done will not be covered there is a time and a season for everything under the sun and the hour that we're living in God is saying it's time for the blood to quit being shed it's time to quit hurting people it's time to start loving one another. It's time to quit running and being a fugitive and pick up your cross and be what God called you to be. Amen. It's quiet in here. God don't want people running. God wants people standing. And I know the Lord give me this message. And look what happened. He said, let's read it. Huh. He said, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed. What are you saying? You can curse yourself by spreading innocent blood. You can curse yourself by not doing what God wants you to do. Oh, but I didn't mean to do that. That wasn't my fault. That was their fault. No, it takes two to walk this game. You and God. You can't walk it on your own. You can't get there on your own. And look what he said. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. 
He couldn't stand it. It was heavy. And let me tell you, when you know that you've done something and you tried to hide it from God and you know that it's there, it's like it don't matter where you go. People can see it, they feel it, and they know it's there. The vagabond was running and trying to hide himself. The fugitive was running and trying to hide himself. And God said, the church, there's people in the church that's running and trying to hide. But the pain and the suffering that they're going to go through it's going to be cursed, Sister Naomi, because there's been bloodshed and the voice is crying out that God said there's blood being shed. And you know who shed that blood, Sister Ruth? The people that call themselves Christians. This ain't an easy message to preach. To give it to you exactly what God gave me. Let's read on and see what he says. Behold, behold, he said, and Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He was saying, God, I can't bear this. I can't handle it. But let me tell you something I know about God. God said in his word, and you've heard it over and over, I won't put more on you than you can bear. But let's read on and see what it says. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. That's the vagabond. Listen, and I shall be a fugitive. This is in the Old Testament. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. It's there. A fugitive wants to run and hide. A vagabond is circling, having no place to call their own. And God's saying there's people in the church, Sister Regina, that are fugitives. They may come to church dressed up like a Christian. They may smile like a Christian. They may act like a Christian. But they're running and they're hiding because you cannot cover the inside and you cannot keep God from hearing what you're thinking. You might say, Preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. And I know God gave me this message for this church and there's somebody here tonight that needs to take heed to what you hear. He who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There's blood being shed right now. And that blood is on your hands. And you can run and you can hide, but you cannot get that blood off of you. He said it. I shall be as a fugitive, he said and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. He was thinking he was going to get killed. But God said, no, you're not going to kill him. You're not going to touch him. You're not going to destroy him. But I'm going to mark him. And everybody that sees him is going to know he's been marked. Come on. It would be a bad thing for God to mark you. The Bible even says, mark those that cause division amongst you. It also talks about the inkhorn riding upon them. God's telling the church today to mark those that cause confusion. God's telling the church today, there's people everywhere that's trying to shed innocent blood. Let me tell you, church, you can't cover that blood except ye stop running Stop being a fugitive and repent and do your first works over again. What do you mean, preacher? Oh, I've done said I'm sorry. What do you mean, preacher? I've done asked for forgiveness. What do you mean, preacher? Get on the good side of God. There's too many people playing church instead of having church. You might say, what inspired this message? The Holy Ghost inspired it. Because God will not be mocked. There's people in the church that's playing games with God. And God will get tired of the games sooner or later. And he will put blood upon that thing. And he'll curse that thing. And when that thing is cursed, it might be like Cain. You can run, but you can't hide. Everywhere you go, people are going to see you and know you. Everywhere you go, you cannot get away from the mark that God has put on you. Everywhere you go, people are going to say, that's the person that killed 
his brother. I would hate to think I was a person that killed my brother. Come on, think about that for a minute. What do you mean? Oh, I didn't shoot him with a gun. What do you mean? Oh, I didn't knock him out. What do you mean? I didn't put him on the ground. But I spiritually killed him. Because I caused him to not be able to get saved and set free. Oh, listen to me. I'm not crazy. I got more scripture. Because look, it must have not been a bad thing because God's, God's power is so graceful. Because he took that cane and he went on and he produced Enoch. And we know that Enoch never suffered death. And we know that there was a city named after him. It's in your Bible. It's sitting right there, read it. Enoch had some children. That was the seed of Cain. The child was not cursed because Enoch served the Lord with a pure heart continually. God loved Enoch. How can God love something that came from something that was so bad? Answer that. Answer that. How can God love something that came from something that was so bad? Because he looked upon the heart of Enoch. Did you know that God's looking on the heart of everyone that's in this church? I want to thank you, sister, for coming and singing tonight. I felt a freeness on you that I could see it. God wants us to be free. We can't be free if we're killing everything around us. You're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. If you go to the book of Acts in the 19th chapter, you'll read about a person who tried to appear to be as one of us. He tried to go and cast out demons and spirits as one of us. You'll find out and you'll read that he couldn't do it. And the spirits, the evil spirits, whooped him, stripped him, and running back to where he came from. And then the spirit even spoke to him. And he said, Jesus, I know. It's time that we stand up and let these demons know who we really are. Instead of partaking with what they have to offer, why can't we just do what Mama said do? Just say no. It's that easy. No, I will not surrender to this seducing spirit. No, I will not follow this unclean thing. No, I will not walk and partake of something that will destroy me and my soul. I came from God and I'm going back to God. I cannot be a person in the church and then go outside the church and be deceitful, unclean, filthy, yoked up. God knows us. The very hairs on my head, and I ain't got many left, are numbered. You may say, why are you preaching this tonight? Because God wants this church to know there's being bloodshed. Innocent blood. Innocent. We need to quit running. Quit being fugitives. Quit being vagabonds. And just serve the Lord. Tell your neighbor sitting next to you, just serve the Lord. Just serve the Lord. Because if you just keep serving the Lord, sooner or later, it will take root in you and that will be all that you know how to do. Did you ever get tired of going to church? 
Come on. I get tired of going to church. Come on. I get tired of praying. I get tired of reading God's word. I get tired of pleading with God. Did you ever get tired? Now I'm going to ask you something else. Why don't you just quit? Huh? What do you mean no? You're not going to quit. Huh? Come on, you can quit. It ain't going to hurt you to miss. I'm not going to quit. Come on, a little little fun ain't going to hurt you. Nobody will know. You tried it. It was miserable. The only, say that out loud. The only love there is is in God. Now wait a minute, Cain was mad, jealous, jealous. 